Hey everybody! In this video we're going to be turning into a Fender Vibro Champ of a mid to late 70s. Uh, customer complaint or customer brought it in, been in storage for a while. Um, he says it passes signal, turns on, passes signal, but it's real noisy. So in this video we're going to tear into it. Uh, identify the issues, do some service maintenance to it, and if this is something that might interest you, then, you know, stay tuned. We got a little bit dirty. Nothing real bad for sitting for a long time. Take a look at the back here. got like a warehouse 8 inch speaker in it 4 ohms um, otherwise I mean it looks pretty well intact it does have the 3 wire um, if I can get the video to focus on it 3 wire plug so but we'll get this this back piece off we'll get the chassis out and we'll take a visual inspection next um, this video is going to be chopped up into several parts. I won't bore you with the unscrewing of the screws and all that. I'll just get the chassis out and on the on a stand, and we'll we'll come back to that. Okay, so we have the Fender Vibro Champ on its on the cradle here, and we've done some testing and measuring and again the complaint was <clears throat> well, I had been sitting in a shed for a while and he would fired it up but he said it was a little bit noisy but was passing signal and I fired it up and yes it's just a little bit noisy like a little bit of a DC hum and the volume pot here was a little crackly so we cleaned the volume pot that kind of cleared that up but if I notice anything else down the road I'll just go ahead and replace the, the, the potentiometer um, and it just really biased super hot and it comes this way from the factory um, if you know I mean it, it, there's a couple issues uh, but basically, you know, in a nutshell, um, this is cathode biased, and this 6v6 tube goes through this cathode bias resistor, and this resistor is kind of what, um, you know, regulates how much current this tube is going to pull. And the way you do it is you measure the plate voltage and the cathode voltage, then you subtract the cathode voltage from the plate voltage, do some math, and you'll come up with how many milliamps the tube is drawing. And, it, and then you can figure out at what percentage of max safe dissipation. Well, a 6V6 GT on the data sheet has like a max voltage for plate voltage at about at like 300 volts now we that's a, I, I think more of a kind of a recommended uh, voltage because see a lot of amps running a lot higher than that with 6v6 like for instance 350 or 360 volts whatever um, but you want to keep your plate volt your your current you know as far as a percentage wise you want to keep it under a hundred percent of max dissipation otherwise you can burn up the tubes really quick and this one is running way over that um, so you know that's going to be addressed we're going to replace the the filter cap which is a uh, three caps in a can at 450 volts it's going on close to 50 years old so we're going to put in three F and T ca caps leave this can in place just disconnect it and put in three F and T's to where the connections from this cap used to go and they'll be a 500 volt caps the other thing is the it, it uses a 5Y3 rectifier which doesn't like to see much more than 10 or 20 microfarad 
at the first stage. So, and this is using a 40 at the first stage. If we look at the schematic, we got our 5Y3 here, and we go up, and then our first cap is a 40 microfarad cap, then a 20, and then a 20. Well, we're going to go with like a 22, a 22, and a 22, just to put a little less um, load on the 5Y3 on power up. Um, but yeah, 420 volts going through a transformer to the plate, and you know, we're measuring 418 volts. So, you know, we the, the what I'm going to do is that the tube is the original and you know, again, 40 years old, 50 almost 50 years old. We're going to put a instead of a, a 6v6gt, we're going to put a 6v6s, which is rated it up to 500 volts so we'll be up above that and then we're going to change out this resistor here from 470 ohm actual reading of 488 but um, we're going to change we're going to go up in value up to pro possibly 1000 ohms and that what that will do is it'll um, you know have the tube pulling less current the higher up we go it will raise the plate voltage a little bit but that'll be well under what the 6v6 can handle and we'll lower the current down um, we're also going to go ahead and replace these white electrolytic um, cathode bypass caps and probably replace the cathode bypass resistors for the preamp tubes change them to metal film carbon comps can be a little bit noisy so we'll do that especially like these two plate resistors here um, we'll go with metal film these have drifted a little over 20 percent out of value um, so we'll do that the the blue coupling caps and the 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 disc caps will are fine we'll leave them alone these two carbon comp dropping resistors will get changed to um, metal oxide uh, just better durability and longevity. We're just going to make this thing reliable so you can enjoy some years of, of playing it. It's not a museum piece or nothing like that. Um, but yeah, we're going to do that. And like if, if we, like for instance, on the bias scene, we're going to pull up our bias calculator just to show. So if we can get this in here. The tube we have is a 6v6 GT right here and again 418 minus 22 gives us 396 plate to cathode voltage. So when you enter that in for that tube and you calculate and we're going with cathode bias down here we got 30.1 is 85% and then we go over here and we got 33.6 for 95% which is average then 100% would be like 35.4 okay and we're, we're pulling anyway we, what we do next is to calculate what we're pulling is we add in the tubes that share the cathode resistor which is just the one we put in the voltage on the cathode which is 22 volts and then the actual resistance of the cathode resistor which is 488 and we calculate that that's where we come down to we're getting you know of plate current we're getting 42.6 um, milliamps uh, and so the dissipation is 16.9 watts which if we look up this is a 14 watt four, 14 watt tube so so you know we're, we're pushing it pretty hard um, with again with 16.9 watts at 120.7 percent of plate dissipation so that's that's where we we figure this out it's kind of it's just like Rob Robinette, um, 
calculate it, it this calculator can be found on other sites too but I used to go to Rob's page but it just helps you to do the math easily so what we're really going to be shooting for is you know 30 to 33 we're going to want to be in between cool and average I don't really like to run them hot so we're going to you know and and running it you know 42.7 or you know 42.6 milliamps is a little bit a little bit high at 120.7 percent dissipation so we're going to cool that down that's just how I do that you know as far as the math goes um, I'm not really super good at I'd, I use a calculator any day and this is a great uh, resource for for calculating all that um, but yeah in a nutshell that's what we're gonna do we're gonna get the parts and then uh, when the parts come in we're gonna uh, come back and and you know show you what we've changed and and uh, you know update our measurements and just to verify that we're you know within you know reasonable limits reasonable levels on our tube uh, as a matter of fact the original tube in it I think it's original RCA the preamp tubes are RCA as also uh, was getting pretty hot um, extremely hot at the base which not uh, all the amps I run with 6v6 tubes they don't get this hot to where it discolors you know like this I didn't notice really anything on the plate you know like discolorations on the plate from where it may have been red plating or whatever but I mean it, we can tell it was just definitely running super hot and you know I just would rather be within you know the tech the spec limits you know are close to them on I and the 6v6s tube is a, a bigger tube more robust and can definitely handle you know a little bit higher plate voltage without you know and and again when, when we cool the bias down on it that's going to help a lot so when we get back we're going to when the parts come in we're going to come back and we're going to show you exactly the components we replaced uh, I, I don't know if I mentioned it but we're going to we're going to change these to um, the dropping resistors when we put the new filter caps in we're going to change these dropping resistors from carbon comp to metal oxide because they're just more durable and this will be probably a, a, a cement wire round uh, and probably a probably put a five water in instead of the three watt that it has um, and then these will the, like the plate resistors will go to metal film and we'll use like one watt metal film resistors uh, for the plate plate load resistors and probably metal film on the cathode bypass resistors along with the MOD electrolytics that we're going to swap out for these white electrolytic bypass caps on the cathode bypass caps on the preamps preamp tubes and on the um, power tube so you know that about covers that when we uh, get the parts we'll come back and we'll show you what what we did okay so we're back um, we put some parts in it did some measurements first off we valve 1b or valve 1a rather we replaced the cathode resistor with a metal film and the electrolytic with the MOD electrolytic bypass cap uh, on to the two carbon comp plate resistors we replaced with metal film one watt plate resistors one watt on the cathodes also then we have a shared cathode resistor and bypass cap well actually over here we have the other valve 1b uh, cathode resistor metal film and bypass cap new and then we have uh, the shared cathode resistor and bypass cap on valve 2 uh, metal film MOD electrolytics and then on to the uh, 6v6 cathode resistor which was 470 ohm we replaced it with a 1000 ohm 1k and also replaced the electrolytic with MOD electrolytic capacitor for the bypass cap on that 
Uh, we went up in the wattage. Uh, we went up to 5 watts, which is fine. We elevated it from the board. This way, if it gets hot, it won't, you know, prematurely ruin the bypass cap or melt wiring or anything like that. Uh, on the dropping resistors, we changed out from the carbon comp, 1 watters, to metal oxide, 2 watt dropping resistors. And over further, we have our main filter caps. Uh, we disconnected the can cap and went with a 20, 20, and 20, or 22, 22, and 22 F and T electrolytics. These are the main DC filtering caps. Uh, we just left the can cap in place, tied the grounds to a tab on the chassis, grounded, and just ran them straight to where the old can cap wires went to on the on the eyelet board there. Um, we also swapped the 6V6 GT tube to a 6V6 S tube which can handle more plate voltage, um, more robust tube and new, uh, not 50 years old. Um, so in summary, our measurements before with the 6V6 GT uh, we had 418 volts on the plate. Uh, the, the cathode voltage was 22 volts. The cathode actual resistance was 488 ohms. And the plate to cathode voltage was 396. So that equates to 42.6 milliamp plate current at 120.7% of the max dissipation for 16.9 watts which is it's a 14 watt tube maximum so it was pushing it very hot so afterwards we with the uh, 6v6s tube which can actually handle more plate voltage which is easier you know, I mean better uh, it did up by changing the cathode resistor we did up the voltage by about 8 volts to 425 the cathode voltage also increased to 33 volts across actual 986 ohms on the cathode resistor which gives us a plate to cathode voltage of 392. So doing the math we come out with 31.7 milliamps of plate current as opposed to the 42.6 which puts us at 88.6% of max safe dissipation as opposed to 120.7 and a dissipation of 12.4 watts on a 14 watt tube so as opposed to the 16.9 so much better here um, it, you know this was what I was wanting to see way more comfortable with that the uh, 6v6s is according to the data sheet is rated at up to 500 volts Whereas the GT on their data sheets say say about 300 volts, uh, you know, which we always run them hotter than that. But 418's pretty hot for for that. So much more comfortable with this setup, and you know, basically it's quiet. I did, uh, you know, been. T checking on this volume control I cleaned it I cleaned all the pots but you know yeah no more scratching coming out of that um, and all it's left to do now is button it up put the screws back to it put it back in its chassis and give it a good little demo and we'll be back with that okay now for the sound demo <laughs>
has gone. We're, we're quiet. <laughs> Thanks for watching.